In this video, I am going to tell you as to how do you calculate interest on drawings made by the partner. And in this specific video, it is in a case where the drawings are being made on a monthly basis. Now, what can happen is that every partner knows if the business is going well, there would be some profits at the end of the year, which are available for distribution. Right. At the same time, if a partner is working, he wants to withdraw some money from the firm so that he can use it to meet his own personal expenses right in both these cases he may withdraw some money from the firm which is known as drawings now generally if the partnership deed does not provide anything no interest is charged by the firm on drawings but if the partnership firm provides that if one person makes drawing but the other does not and to be fair to everyone there has to be some interest charge from the people who are withdrawing right then it has to be given now these drawings can be made over different period of time they can be made on a monthly basis right they can be made on a quarterly basis or they can be made on any of the dates not necessarily a monthly quarterly or anything in either of these three cases if you want to do it simply you just take the date on which the money has been withdrawn right and from that date until the end of the year you can charge interest on that but in some cases given the pattern in which it is there we can also apply certain formulas and one of the things which we are going to see in this video is what if the drawings are made monthly right and monthly as in they could be in the beginning of the month they could be in the middle of the month or they could be in the end of the month. Let's see that. L, M and N are partners sharing profits of the firm equally amongst themselves. Very good. During the year 2015-16, the following amounts were withdrawn by partners. L at the rate of 1000 per month at the beginning of each month, which means how much has he withdrawn in all? He's withdrawn 12,000 by way of 1000 per month for 12 months so 12000 at the beginning of each month m 1000 per month at the end of the each month again in his case also the drawings are 12000 the difference is they are in the end of the month and n 1000 at the middle of the month right so again the total drawings in this case are 12000 calculate interest on drawings for each of the partners at 12% per annum for the 3 year ended for the year ended 31st March 2016. Now, like I told you, let's first calculate this for L. In L's case, one of the things which you could have done is you could have said that, okay, he would withdrew on 1-4-2015, 1,000 rupees, right? The year ended on 31st March 2016. 31st March 2016. Right, so he used this money for 12 months. I can find out interest on 1000 rupees for 12 months at 12%, and that will be the amount of interest which has to be paid on this amount. But this process would be conserving, consuming. Why? I'll need to make this calculation 12 times. Right, so in order to do this, there's a simpler formula to do this, but one word of caution which needs to be noted here. This formula is applicable only if the amount which has been withdrawn is consistent and equal. If in one month he was drawing 1000, the other he was drawing 2000, then 3000, this won't have applied. It is only because he has applied a constant amount over the entire year at the beginning of a month that we can apply this. Considering such a situation, you can apply the formula that on the total drawings right apply the rate of interest which is to be charged on drawings right and you calculate interest on this wherever it is at the beginning of the month in this case it's at the beginning of the month for 6.5 months right when you do that, you are going to get the amount of interest that has to be charged in one go. Your total drawings were how much? They were 12,000. 
what was the rate of interest it was 12 divided by 100 12 percent for six and a half month right so this 12 is going to knock off this 12 0 0 0 0 what you are left with is 6.5 times 120 right and this when you do it at the beginning of the month is going to give you 780 rupees so the amount which has to be charged as interest on drawings will be 780 like i said we applied this formula only because there was a constant amount which was withdrawn at the beginning of each month let's go to m in his case what has happened is if you just go back he has withdrawn at the end of each month what that means is he first withdrew on 30th april 2015 and used it until 31st march or uh, for 11 months so same you could have done for 1000 you could have calculated for 11 months then the next month 1000 would have been for 10 months and so on but to avoid this process again we can use the formula because mathematically this thing is available to us which will be total drawings into rate of interest into how much now 5.5 divided by 12 so the interest is calculated for five and a half month 12,000 into the rate of interest 12 by 100 into 5.5 divided by 12 goes goes 1 2 1 2 120 times 5.5 right at the end of the month this is going to give you 660 rupees so this is the amount of interest which has to be charged on drawings from m in the case of n he was withdrawing at the middle of the month in this case also again mathematics comes to our help so total drawings into rate of interest into 6 divided by 12 right so you have 12,000 into 12 by 100 into 6 by 12. We take the rescue here. 1, 2, 1, 2, 120 into 6 gives you 720 rupees. Now this 720 basically is an expense for the firm. So you, if you have to pass the journal entry in all these cases, right, it will be interest on drawings account debit to where it has to be charged from whom the partners so it will be partners capital account now whether fixed or fluctuating will depend on a particular situation for the next set of our videos you can also subscribe to our channel through which you can get a lot more access to many of the videos which we have okay and we will be uploading more videos for the upcoming examinations in the next few months for accountancy and economics.